Hello, this is Jack Anthony, and the title of this video is Helpful Astro Explanations. We're going to take a close look at low Earth orbit, orbit element behavior. The presentation is in a conversational astrodynamics manner, so whether you have a PhD or are new to this business, I hope it'll help you understand. The key thing is we are needing to do more and more in the astrodynamic domain and I hope this will help you better understand some of the things you hear or are involved with. Now, don't look at the right side of this chart. Don't try to read that. Before we get underway, I wanna discuss how I'm gonna format our discussion. To the right is a comprehensive table that has five columns. We're gonna go through a few slices at a time, but I wanted you to see the total table it's available in Microsoft Excel. I could send it to you and it's got a little bit of detail in there, but it summarizes some of the key aspects, the orbit element, its symbol we use, what it tells us, whether it's static or dynamic. Now that might be a new term to you. Static, it's pretty much staying the same. Dynamic, it's changing. Maybe a little, maybe a lot. And then the discussion. And that's where you might wanna as we go through the slides, go back through and read the words I crafted. I hope you understand that this is a chance to introduce to you some great astrodynamic knowledge that you may already have. And as you know, astrodynamics rocks. Okay, what we're gonna do is look at the first three elements I've decided to look at. Mean motion, the symbol N, it tells us the size of the orbit, it tells us the period of the orbit, but not in a direct way. It's pretty much a static uh, uh, orbit element. It tells us the orbit rate in revolutions per day. If you divide it into 24 hours, you get the orbit period. If you manipulate the orbit period equation, you could pull out of it the semi-major axis, which the major axis is the long axis of the orbit. And I provide some math and the notes. Mean motion will increase over time due to atmospheric drag if you're encountering that. So it can increase. It's a static element, but it has a little bit of a change to it. Eccentricity is the shape. A circular orbit, eccentricity is zero. The Otter the shape, the higher the number until you get to one, then it's a parabola. Then beyond one, it's a hyperbolic. There's a nifty equation to figure out eccentricity, and I present that in the notes. And uh, eccentricity can change over time. Atmospheric drag can make it tend to converge to zero, and then the vehicle spirals in in decay. Inclination is the tilt. It's actually the angular, the, the, the um, angle between the angular momentum vector, and you get to use your right-hand rule to figure that out, and the third axis of the coordinate frame. Examples are ISS is in a 51 degree inclined, and the very popular sun synchronous orbit varies from 96.5 to 99.5 degrees inclined, depending on the altitude. Inclination is pretty much static, but it does have some periodic uh, oscillation on it. Uh, the bumper sticker on the bottom is real important. If you find yourself doing a comparison between two orbits and taking the difference between the orbital elements, make sure their epic time is equal, is the same, is in agreement, because these things are moving ever so slightly or maybe a lot, and to compare them, you have to have the common time. Right ascension of the ascending node, the twist. It's a dynamic, it's a dynamic orbital element. It's a measure of the angle between the vector from the center of the earth to where the satellite crosses the equator northbound, that's the uh, ascending node vector, and the first axis, the vernal equinox direction. It's the twist of the orbit. And the Effects of the Earth oblateness, the bulge of the Earth at the equator, is what causes this to drift or to precess or, 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 or recess. 
It's a weird gravity thing that involves torque on the orbit. Some call it the J2 effect. It torques the orbit and makes the RAND twist drift. The RAND plot that I'm going to show you next will give us some insight into how this motion occurs. So it's very important that you uh, understand some of the key features, and we'll go over that plot in a minute. But this orbital element is a changer. It's dynamic. And that's why it's so important for you to make sure you have a common time when comparing things. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go to the next chart and look at a nifty plot. So this on the left shows you the bulge. It's a 22 kilometer difference at the equator each side. So think of it as a 21 kilometer bulge. And uh, that's what put torques on the orbit. Now this is a RAND dot plot. And as you can see, I've identified where the sun synchronous orbit is. It's around uh, the upper 90s in inclination. And you can see the RAND dot is one degree per day. Therefore, whatever orientation your orbit has to the sun, it is going to continue at the rate of the sun. So that's a real cool feature of the sun synchronous. It holds the orientation. As you can see, for inclinations less than 90, it's a negative term. It regresses and progresses if it's above 90. Okay, and you can see the altitude differential, how that influences it. We'll take a peek at the equations in a few minutes and you'll get to see the variables that matter. This is the RAND dot plot. Go back and give this some focus. I think you'll better understand it. The argument of perigee, the eccentricity vector, is pointing to the closest approach to the Earth, the perigee point. Argument of perigee is zero, it's at the node. If it's 90 degrees, it's at the northernmost point. 270 degrees, it's at the southernmost point. So ask yourself, if argument of perigee is 180 degrees, where is the satellite? <coughs> it's probably near the descending node. For LEO, argument of perigee drifts due to Earth oblateness. And the plot we're about to see, figure two, gives a little more complicated nature. It is here we see the 63.4 and 116.6 degree inclinations are called the Molniya inclinations and argument of perigee drift does not occur, it's zero. And that can work in our favor. So, because perigee stays put. So we're gonna take a look at, um, at this uh, argument of perigee drift. This plot shows what happens to the argument of perigee, the rotation of perigee. As you can see, 63.4 and 116.6 are zero. So that's pretty cool. The Molniya orbit is an example of that. So you can see the drift rate for perigee is positive when it's below 63.4 <coughs> and negative when it's above 116.6. No, it's positive if it's above 116.6. In between, it's negative. And look at the variability in the drift rates. That, that's really amazing. So study this chart and get a better familiarity of what's going on with perigee. Lastly, the mean anomaly. Now that is a very, very, very dynamic uh, orbital element. It's the orbit motion. You're whizzing around the world. It cycles zero to 360 degrees. It's related to the true anomaly. There are subtle differences between mean motion and true anomaly. It's an angular representation. There's another element you might hear about, and that is argument of latitude. For a circular inclined orbit, that is measured from the ascending node on around the orbit. So argument of latitude of 90 degrees would be at the northernmost point. For orbits that are near circular but not quite circular, it's still valid to add the argument of perigee plus the mean anomaly to get an idea of how far from the node the satellite is. It can be a very helpful additional orbital element to comprehend the orbit. Again, I want to point out that you have to make sure orbital elements in comparison are at the same time. Lastly, I want to get off the stage with this final chart. This is the nerdy chart. 
This is pulled from a great reference that shows you the equations for a RAND dot and argument of perigee dot. As you can see, it has the J2 term, which is a coefficient, and it has the variables mean motion, inclination, and also buried in the parameter is the eccentricity. So basically, these are the equations that govern those plots that you saw. I hope you'll give this a read. It's perhaps a little intimidating, but it gives you a little insight into the mathematics. Well, we're approaching 11 minutes, and this is a one-hit wonder. I'm wondering what you think. The low Earth orbit, particularly sun-synchronous orbits, have a lot to tell us. Some of the orbital elements are static, some are dynamic, some very dynamic. I hope you'll go back and study these slides and better comprehend what you're hearing and what you're involved with, because it is very, very important that we all understand the astrodynamic domain. Thank you.